Okay, good morning. Uh, all those who have logged in, very good morning. Good to see you guys today. Uh, we are recording this session, so just to let you know. Okay. Um, so the last uh, couple of days, yesterday and the day before, we looked at uh, laying the axe to the root, right? So different things that, uh, different areas which we need to bring under the cleansing, refining work of the Holy Spirit. And it's, it's like how the Lord Jesus said, it's, it's like laying the axe. When the Holy Spirit deals with us, it's like laying the axe to the root of the problem. But one thing is that we need to cooperate, right? We need to surrender. We need to give ourselves to the Lord. And the Lord will deal, right? Whatever things are, you know, all these things that we're looking at um, are, are really things that trouble us. Right? If you look at jealousy or pride or lust and all these things, these really trouble us and um, you know, they, they make us fall short of the glory of God. Right? They bring us, they withhold us from fulfilling what God wants us to fulfill. They withhold us from living the way God wants us to live. Right? So, so it's good that we open our lives to the Holy Spirit to the work of the Holy Spirit to, to deal with, to refine and, and cleanse our lives. Okay. And then we will experience that freedom and the liberty that comes from the Spirit of God. Because the Word of God very clearly says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. Right? We will experience that in our spirit, in our minds and in our lives. Okay, so uh, let's, why don't we pray and get started, right? Let's, uh, let's pray. Father God, we, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Um, yet another day that you've given us, Lord, to, to learn, Lord, even as you reveal your heart to us, Lord, to learn to receive from you, Lord, and to walk in the revelation, to walk in what we receive from you, God. We thank you, Lord. We, we commit each one of us into your mighty hands, God. Um, just go ahead and you pray and say, Lord, speak to me today. Lord, deposit your word in my heart today. Lord, deal with my heart today. Deal with my life today. I want to encounter you, your presence. Um, I want to encounter your power. I you want know, you just go ahead and just pray that prayer. Um, and uh, make it a sincere one. And may it come from our hearts. And maybe you're in a place saying, Lord, um, I don't know. I don't feel any hunger. I don't feel any you know, intense desire. But you can pray that as well. And say, Lord, change my heart. I really want to know you. Change my heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Yes, Lord, you know us, uh, Lord, inside out. And Lord, you know our, uh, our present circumstance. You know the condition of our heart, Lord. Lord, what is going on in our thoughts, in our minds. You know everything about us. And Lord, we come to your presence as we are. And this morning we ask, O oh God, that, uh, Lord, even as we acknowledge that you indwell us, Lord, we ask that you would, Lord, strengthen, refresh, Lord, lead us into all that you have for us today, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, today we're going to look at, in this morning session, we're going to look at... Um, uh, this whole aspect of baptism uh, in the Holy Spirit. Okay? What is this baptism in the Holy Spirit? Why is it necessary? Why is it important? And uh, is it for every believer? You know, all those kinds of things. What happens when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit? Right? So we're going to be studying that. And, uh, and after we take a break, after we come back, um, maybe there are some questions and doubts. You know, we'll answer that. And also we would pray, pray and minister, pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Like for maybe some of us are already baptized and uh, we move in the gifts and so on. Uh, that's wonderful. Uh, if not, you know, it will be a new uh, thing that the Lord does in us. Right? Otherwise, if we are already, you know, filled and, uh, and we move in the gifts, it will be another refresher for us. Right? Um, so that is what we're going to look at. Okay. So in the... Uh, <clears throat> Laying the axe to the root, the, whatever we were studying uh, yesterday and the day before, we looked at one scripture, right? 
we started off with one scripture anyone remembers what it is we started off with one scripture one main scripture um and then we went on to laying the axe to the root and so on so where is this laying whole laying the axe to the root where where does where is it found sorry okay is it in old testament or new testament we'll start from the basics new testament okay online students you know you can put your uh, answers on the chat right okay in the new testament whose words were these is laying the axe to the root who said those words john the baptist so it's definitely in the new testament okay so which of the gospels i know you know in a, in a couple of places he says but in matthew's gospel right matthew chapter 3 and verse 11 i think right matthew chapter 3 and verse 11 where uh, john the baptist comes and he says hey, this is what is going to happen i introduce to you the lord jesus right he whose sandals i'm not worthy to carry but he see i'm baptizing you with water that's what john the baptist was doing right what is baptism to immerse completely in something right that term was used for even dyeing of garments and so on right in those days so baptism means to immerse completely surround completely immerse baptizo so john the baptist was baptizing people in water right in those rivers he was just baptizing them he was baptizing them to repentance he was saying you repent change your ways right and then when he is introducing jesus the lord jesus what does he say he says there's coming after me jesus whose sandals i'm not worthy to carry he will do something what will he do he will baptize with the holy spirit and fire he will baptize with the holy spirit and fire so and uh, you know he, he says that his winnowing fan in his hand was 12 uh, he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire okay now this burning you know it's a it's a work of refining it's a work of burning away all the unnecessary things it also refers to the eternal judgment the final judgment right unquenchable fire the holy spirit will do that but for the believer it's the work of changing refining burning away the unnecessary things so that the believer can be free of all these things right so he says the holy spirit will do that um but he, he says this holy the, the he will baptize you with the holy spirit okay um you know something to do with that grammar if you look at those words that words that he used baptize with it can actually be translated as baptize in baptize of baptize with and so on right so uh, when we say baptize with the holy spirit or baptize in the holy spirit it's one and the same thing because in the greek it's you can actually use it interchangeably right so um, so that's something that to bear in mind okay so what what is he going to do he's going to baptize the believer the follower with the holy spirit okay. now the lord jesus himself when he ministered on the earth he ministered by the power of the holy spirit right he he ministered by the power of the holy spirit and scripture testifies to that and he also promised the believer that he hey, i'm going to send the promise of the father in the god in in the book of john he says i go to the father it's it's benefit beneficial for me that i go to the father for then he will send the holy spirit and then he goes on to say hey you will do the things that i do john chapter 14 and verse 12 okay you will do the things that i do you will do greater things in the sense the lord wants to empower each and every one of us to minister in the same way that he did okay to minister means to preach the gospel to heal the sick and and all the other other things that followed his ministry signs wonders miracles the lord jesus wants us to minister in the same way and for that he says i will empower you by the power of the holy spirit and that is why he's saying you know i will send the father i will send the promise of the father 
okay uh, one particular scripture luke chapter 24 and verse 48 49 okay if you um, if you're following in the book oh, i forgot if you're following in the book you, it is page number 4 um okay so page 2 is it page 2 okay um okay i'm an old book i'm following okay if you're following the book it's page number 2 um those of you online if you're following the pdf uh, the ebook it's page number 2 right okay luke chapter 24 verse 48 and 49 he says i will send behold i send the promise of my father upon you but wait in the city of jerusalem okay so he's telling the disciples i send the promise of my father but wait in the city of jerusalem okay now we move on to the book of acts chapter 1 and uh, the lord is with them the resurrected lord he is with them and he is commanding the same thing he says wait in jerusalem why should they wait in jerusalem saying i send the promise of the father you know can you see that what page is it 3 uh, okay um being assembled together with them he commanded them not to depart from jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the father which he said you have heard from me right which means he has already spoken to them he has already taught them he said you know remember i told you so you wait in jerusalem behold i send the promise of the father upon you okay for john truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the holy spirit not many days from now so he's actually recounting the whole thing right john when he introduced jesus he said uh, i'm baptizing you with water but he will baptize you with the holy spirit the so lord is saying remember i told you i will send the promise of the father so you have to wait in jerusalem this john baptized with water but you will be baptized with the holy spirit not many days from now okay so he's promising and this is what he's saying verse 8 acts chapter 1 verse 8 but you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and to the ends of the earth okay so this is the he's saying this is what will happen when you wait in jerusalem you will be baptized uh, in the holy spirit i will send the promise of the father and you will receive what you will receive power to be witnesses okay so that is the objective of the baptism of the holy spirit why baptism of the holy spirit why baptism in the holy spirit so that we can receive that the follower of the lord jesus can receive power to be witness power to witness and how did the lord jesus witness when power in deliverance right in healing in forgiveness in sharing the gospel right and people were set free people were you know j- joyful they received solution for their problems right so the same way the lord is saying you will be witnesses but you will be witnesses with this holy spirit power okay so that is what the baptism of the holy spirit is for the lord wants to work in us and he wants each one of us to be witnesses right testifying about jesus but not with just mere words but with holy spirit power okay everyone okay okay right so let's uh, for for the purpose of study we're going to look at the book of acts okay we're in chapter 2 um maybe page number 4 i think or yeah chapter 2 and so we're going to look at uh, several instances in the book of acts where the holy spirit where people were baptized with the holy spirit or filled with the holy spirit and certain things happened okay so we're going to we're going to study that to see okay what happened when people were baptized in the holy spirit okay um, so we see in the book of acts five instances or five times this is recorded there could have been many more instances or incidents of people being baptized with the holy spirit but five very clearly recorded incidents okay so uh, first one is in the uh, is in acts chapter 2 okay acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 okay let's let's read right when the day of 
Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, as one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this is recorded for us, book of Acts, chapter 2. Um, they were all in, the, uh, uh, in, in one place. There were about 120 of the disciples. They were praying. And, uh, and suddenly there was the sound of the rushing mighty wind. They were all indoors. Right? Everything was closed, but there was the sound of a rushing wind. Okay, just imagine, we're all, you know, no windows here, but suddenly there's a sound of a rushing wind, right? as if all the fans were on. No, that is what they experienced. And there, on top of each of their heads, it appeared like tongues of fire okay? on each of their heads. Something supernatural was happening because there is wind and there is also fire. Uh, and uh, it says the sound of a rushing wind. So, yeah. And then something happened. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues or other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Okay? So, which means that Holy Spirit gave them the words of other tongues or other languages and they began to speak out. Something supernatural happen okay so what does it mean here we learn we see that they spoke they began to speak who spoke the disciples spoke okay so it was not god speaking it was not the holy spirit speaking but it was the disciples themselves speaking but they were speaking the words which the holy spirit was giving them how do we know that? Verse 4, it says, The Spirit gave them utterance. They spoke as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay? So, our expectation, our thinking is this. Okay, the Lord gives the words and we speak it out. He fills us with the Holy Spirit. He gives the words and it is me who speaks it out. It is I who speak it out. Right? Okay. So, they were all there. And it was the feast of Pentecost, 50 days after the first, uh, feast of the first fruit. So there were people from the surrounding areas, Jews from the surrounding areas, who spoke other languages. Right? So they were all there, and they saw and they heard this, their own language being spoken. Their, in their own language, people were magnifying God. So they found it strange. Why? Because they knew that these people were Galileans, these people were, you know, the local folks, and they had no way that they could speak their own language, right? So they were all, uh, it, it says here, if you, if you go to Acts chapter 2, it says that they were amazed, they were perplexed, they were um, mocking them, right? All, all kinds of reactions, right? Because it says that... Uh, uh, you know, different kinds of people were there. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Judea. So all these regions, people had come for the Feast of Pentecost. And after the first Feast of First Fruits, they're there waiting for the uh, Feast of Pentecost. So now the day of Pentecost had come and people were speaking in other languages. Okay? So they began to, they, all kinds of reactions, but some of them mocked. Okay, so they made fun of them, saying, these people are drunk. Okay? So they heard people speak in their own language. Okay? So I'm sure a lot of languages are represented here, like Hindi. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's, there's Telugu there, there's Malayalam there. Uh, what else? Uh, huh? Tamil is there, Mizo. Yeah? Mizo? No. Not Mizo, no. Uh, Rinchen? What language? Yeah. English only, okay. <laughs> okay. Any other any other language? Marathi. Huh? Mal Malayalam, of course. I, I, I think I speak said. Konkani Pasra. Yeah. What do you speak? Hindi. Okay. Kannada. Kannada. Nagamese. 
who speaks nagamese you speak okay okay so different kinds of languages and um, yeah, thanks sanjay for posting that a link um, so different kinds of languages people are praising god okay so there's no way that uh, what is your name huh nonzeng okay so there's no way nonzeng can speak uh, tamil can you nonzeng or malayalam <laughs> right this is like down south from northeast so so is, let's say nonzeng just sings tamil neetru minrum maradavar you know that's a tamil song <laughs> and everybody is like wow don't say how did you get that you know this is something recent and how did you learn language you no know, i was just singing in tongues right so that is what happened here so they were all amazed they said wow there's something supernatural is happening there's no way these people could speak uh this our languages but they are speaking and they are actually praising god right it says here we hear them speaking verse 11 acts chapter 2 verse 11 we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of god okay. so they are um, you know speaking these uh, uh are magnifying god praising god and so on and then um, uh peter stands up and then he addresses the crowd and he says you know uh, since people were mocking and saying that these people are drunk because some of them were actually speaking something which was not making sense right it sounded like gibberish it sounded as if they were drunk they were behaving strangely right so peter stands up and he says hey it's 9 o'clock in the morning they are not drunk as you suppose right and let it be known to you and he goes on to quote from joel chapter 2 verse 28 to 32 and it says and he says this is what was mentioned in the old testament in the scriptures you know that was the scriptures they had he said this is what joel mentioned what did he say uh, joel chapter 2 verse 28 to 30 right it shall come to pass in those days says god that i will pour out of my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions your old men shall see dreams and on my men servants and on my maid servants i will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy okay so peter saying this is what uh, is mentioned there and this is what is happening here okay but if you notice joel talks about prophecy joel talks about dreams joel talks about visions but none of that was happening there right this is just that people were speaking in strange languages right so we understand that the it is the same holy spirit but the manifestation of his power the manifestation of the holy spirit can be different right it can be varied but it's the same holy spirit who displays his power who displays um his presence okay um okay there's a somebody's audio is on if uh, if that is on could you please um, mute your mic i just see a comment here online students um somebody's let me just see sorted okay thanks john okay john blessy uh, you raised your hand if it's um John do you have a question or something or Okay you can post on the group John I I, I don't know whether you raised your hand by mistake but okay okay let's keep going Okay so um so we see that different kinds of manifestations of the holy spirit so uh, so Peter you know makes a very important statement there he says in verse 38 okay if you can look at um what page is it on anand uh, page 6 okay so uh, acts chapter 2 38 he says peter said to them repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of the lord in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit okay so what had happened just then they had this whole wonderful supernatural experience of being baptized in the holy spirit so peter saying you know you are yet to receive jesus so repent and receive jesus 
into your heart. That's what he says. Repent and be, you know, each one of you be baptized in the name of the Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of sins. And you shall also receive the same thing. The same thing that we have received. What is it? It says it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Anna. Yeah, so this is the first time we record that the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, for the uh, people, you know, after the cross, right? in, in such ways that was prophesied by Joel, you know, people experiencing the power and the presence of the uh, baptism. The, yeah, receive the, we're going to look at that. So, yeah. So we see um, it's a different measure of the Holy Spirit, again, uh, like he breathed on them. Uh, so Anand's question is, you know, we see another reference there in John chapter 20, verse 20, 21, I think, right? 21, 22, where he says, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, and then we see that reference also. So what is the difference, you know? Yeah, so this experience of baptism of the Holy Spirit, it was for the first time for all. Um, because this is something that we were, they were experiencing for the first time, um, that there was a supernatural manifestation of tongues and so on. So we see that this is something which is unique and it's happening in history for the first time, right? So we will, but we will also, you know, learn about what was that then, you know, when he said, you know, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. We'll, we'll look at that, right? Okay. Okay. And, uh, and Peter says in verse 39, for the, for the promise is to you and to your children. Okay. So this promise, this gift of the Holy Spirit is not just for us living at that time. Not just for us disciples. Okay? It's not something that is just for us and that is it. He's saying this is promise is for you. He's, in fact, he says, repent and be baptized and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then he goes on to say in verse 39, this promise is for you, your children, and as, and as many uh, who are, all those who are afar off, as many as our Lord, our God will call. Okay, so he's saying as many as the Lord, our God will call, which means he's referring to the future generations, is referring to maybe a millennia or two later to us also, right? As many as the Lord will call who respond to that call, you know, this gift of the Holy Spirit is available. This promise is to each one of us, okay? So he says it is a gift, which means what is a gift? It's something that is not, you don't give, you know, you don't tell someone, hey, I want that gift. Can you, can you, can I give you some money, right? You don't, you don't say that. No, gift is given freely, right? So we just receive the gift. Right? Gift is not earned. Like you don't do some 10 things and say, now I've earned my gift or I've performed well. I'm a top performer. Therefore, I need this gift. You know, I, I'm entitled to this gift. We don't do that, right? The gift is given freely. So he's saying this is a gift which is given freely. We don't earn it. We don't, we're not entitled for it. We don't do any good works to receive it, but it is purely given freely. Okay. Okay. And it's for future generations. It's for available for us today. So that's the first instance that we see in the book of Acts, where it talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What is the second one? Second one we read in the book of uh, Acts again, chapter 8. Okay. Uh, chapter 8. So what happens in chapter 8? These believers who are in Jerusalem, they are, arrest, are persecuted for their faith. So they go from Jerusalem, run away from Jerusalem, and they go to this place called Samaria. Okay? And uh, the wonderful thing is this, as they are going, wherever they are going, they are preaching the gospel. They are sharing about Jesus. People are getting saved. So also in Samaria, okay, there's this person by name Philip. He goes there to Samaria. He shares the gospel. People are saved. Um, they, you know, they, they experience some wonderful things. It says here that unclean spirits came out with a loud voice, 
for many were possessed, many who were paralyzed and lame were healed, and there was great joy in that city. Where? Samaria. Right? They had received the gospel. So they were believers there. And it also uh, talks about a person named Simon, who was actually a practicing you know, a sorcerer or witchcraft, was into all that. He also believed. Okay. Now, when, um, uh, when the apostles who were in Jerusalem, when they heard, people in Samaria have become believers. Right? When they heard that, they did something. They sent Peter and John. Okay. They sent Peter and John. And it was with this, with this objective. Peter and John, when they came, when they met the believers who were already following Jesus, they laid hands on them and prayed. Okay? And it says here that when they came, when they came, is it, uh, I'm looking at Acts chapter 8 and verse 15. When they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, um, for as yet he had fallen upon none of them, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. So it says here that this is what Peter and John did. They came, they prayed, they laid hands and prayed, and people received the Holy Spirit. Okay. Were they believers? Yes, they had already believed. So when they, so that's the, the question, you know, when they believed, Obviously, we know that the Holy Spirit indwells the believer, right? We see in, uh, we, we see in, in, in the epistles, we see that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit, right? So here we see that this baptism of the Holy Spirit, we learn it's, it's something for every believer who has the indwelling presence, but this is something that the Lord wants the believer to experience and receive in order to be a witness with power, right? Okay, and here also something supernatural happened. In Acts chapter 2, we saw that people, what are the supernatural thing happened in Acts chapter 2? The sound of a rushing wind in a closed room, tongues of fire on everyone's head, and people speaking different languages, which they had not learnt, the Holy Spirit gave them utterance and they spoke it, right? And they magnified God through those words. So we saw, saw these supernatural things. Here, none of that is mentioned, okay? But here, something supernatural happened because it says in verse 18, okay, verse 17 says, they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Verse 18, and when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. Okay. Why? He said, give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. So he said, you know, I want this power. Something supernatural has happened. I can see, I can hear, you know, something happened. It's not like he laid hands and... People received the Holy Spirit and it was not noticeable. Something noticeable happened that he could see with his eyes or he could hear with his ears. Something, some change happened. And so he said, let me give you some money. You give me this power. Because earlier he was into witchcraft. He was a sorcerer. And it says that he actually amazed people with the display of this magic, black magic, sorcery, whatever. People were, you know, they said, wow, he was actually controlling them. So now he, he actually believed in the Lord. But now what is he saying? I want this power. You know, his motive was, I want to display this power now. I want people to see me. I want people, the same kind of influence that I had, I want to have that now over the people, right? So, but the important thing is this, something supernatural happened. It is not mentioned here, but it was something tangible. Right? We can, okay, we can infer or we can conclude that this was maybe the gift of tongues. We can conclude. Maybe they also started speaking in tongues, just like how it happened in Acts chapter 2. Okay? But one of the lessons that we can learn is that going by Peter and John and what they did, we understand that it was quite a normal thing 
if somebody is a believer so if somebody believes in jesus and becomes a follower of the lord jesus it became the normal thing to go pray for them that they might be baptized in the holy spirit right it was not like the first time it's a normal thing so peter and john the first thing they do is they lay hands on the believers and say okay this is for you now you believed in jesus you become a believer be filled with the holy spirit right so we see that it was a normal practice in the early church uh, uh, that people be prayed for to receive the baptism of the holy spirit okay the third thing third instance that we see is in acts chapter 9 Okay, so so far we've seen two. The third one is in Acts chapter nine, and it it involves Saul, who later came to be known as Paul, and who did great things. So in Saul's life, we know, right? He was on the way to Damascus. He has his encounter with the Lord Jesus. He falls down of his animal. He is unable to see, and he's taken into the city, right? And um, he's in this house, and uh, he's waiting. So the Lord speaks to a disciple named Ananias. Okay, let's read Acts chapter nine, verses ten onwards. Okay, verse ten. Now there was a certain disciple at at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one named Saul of Tarsus. for behold he is praying you know it's amazing the lord speaks in visions first of all right we learned that then the lord speaks great details right go is in this house the house of judas this is his name is saul of tarsus and he even gives the name of the street he is in a street called straight address great details right and he's saying behold he is praying right now okay let's continue verse 12 and in a vision He has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. So the Lord is like you know doing multiple things at the same time. He's speaking to Ananias in a vision, right? And at the same time Paul is receiving a vision. What is that vision? That vision is of Ananias coming and laying hands and praying. Amazing, right? At the same time he's saying, you know, even now in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in putting his hand so you go now ananias is troubled ananias answered lord i have heard from many about this saul right that is how much he harm he has done to your saints in jerusalem verse 13 right for he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name verse 15 but the lord said to him go for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before gentiles kings and children of israel and i will show him how many things he must suffer for my sake okay so ananias goes verse 17 ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him he said brother saul the lord jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the holy spirit so that's the lord's plan for every believer to be filled with the holy spirit right and that's the instruction ananias received go lay hands pray right and this is amazing orchestration supernatural divine orchestration so he goes and this and he says um and this is what happens when he prays verse 18 immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales and he received his sight at once and he arose and was baptized okay So he received his sight. He could not see. Now he could see. It says yeah, he arose and he was baptized. Now, again, um, the intention where, where Ananias says, you know, this is what I, I'm called. I've been instructed to come and pray for you, that you might see again. I've been instructed to come and pray for you, that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. So verse 18 says he saw and he was baptized. so both happen now again here we see that um did paul speak in tongues 
you know, did anything supernatural happen? It's not recorded here, right? But we do know that Paul moved in all the gifts of the Spirit because that is what he taught the Corinthian church. All the nine gifts of the Spirit. So he taught them, okay, this, these are the gifts of the Spirit. This is what you must do. This is how it needs to be operated in the church and so on. And he gave explicit instructions about the gift of tongues as well and gift of prophecy and so on. So, um, so we see that Paul, we know that Paul, if not then, eventually started praying in tongues. Right? In fact, in 1 Corinthians 14, I think it's verse 14 uh, or 18, right? it says, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. Okay, so that's Paul's own testimony. In his own words, he's saying, I pray in tongues. I speak in tongues more than something supernatural happening over and over again. Okay, let's look at the fourth one. Okay, um, this is in the house of Cornelius, the man called Cornelius. Again, some supernatural things happen. If you if you read verse, uh, sorry, chapter ten, we see that supernaturally God sets up, right? Cornelius, he meets Cornelius, he sends an angel with a message, send people, bring Peter. Peter's living here, address, everything. So they go. And as they go, the Lord speaks to Peter through a vision, to a trance that he, that he has, and says, go. Okay? So um, this is what happens. So finally, Peter is there in Cornelius' house. We are in Acts chapter 10 and verse 44. So Peter is preaching. He sees that, you know, he goes to Cornelius' house and people are already gathered there. Okay, they're all waiting, expectant. Okay, here's a man who's coming with a message from God. So much hunger, expectation. They're all sitting there. Can you just imagine, right? You're going to somebody's house and you say, come, come, come. You know, we're all, we're all waiting. And you suddenly, you know, you just see that people are waiting, sitting everywhere. They're saying, you know, yeah, please, please speak. Whatever you want to speak. Now just go ahead, we're just waiting to hear your word. So Peter just starts, and he says here, while Peter was still speaking these words, you know, he's talking about the Lord Jesus, he's talking about, um, you know, verse 34 onwards, right? If you see, um, he's talking about the message uh, of the gospel is for the Jews and the Gentiles and so on. Verse 44, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the, heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Okay, so here are these Jewish believers along with uh, Peter, and they are astonished. What is happening? Oh, this gift of the Holy Spirit has been poured out. And what is the evidence? What is the proof? Hey, they are speaking in tongues and they're magnifying God. One of the factors, right? One of the signs. Saying they heard them speak with tongue, uh, tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. And he commanded them, verse 48, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few words. Okay? A few, uh, stay a few days, sorry. So, excuse me. So they, uh, as Peter was preaching, people were believing, they were already expectant. The Holy Spirit was poured out on them and they began to speak with other tongues and magnify God and so on. So here, we don't see any laying on of hands like Peter and John. We don't see any, any laying on of hands like Ananias who prayed over Saul. No laying on of hands. Just like Acts chapter 2, the first time, sovereignly, you know, they were just expectant, they believed in Jesus, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So certain things that we learn here, okay, I don't need to have somebody lay hands on me and pray over me. Right? Jesus is the one who baptizes, 
That's what John said. He's the one who baptizes with Holy Spirit and with fire. So God can do it anyway. He can do it when people lay hands. He can do it sovereignly. No, even if people do not lay hands. That's something that we... Uh, okay. Then we also see that these people believed in Jesus. They are baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then they were baptized in water. Okay. Do we see that? Right? Verse 48. So Peter commands them. He says, okay, you know, now why don't, why, uh, who can stop them from being baptized? So he says, can anyone forbid water? And he says, these should not be baptized. So let them be baptized in the name of the Lord. So then they are baptized in water as well. Okay, so we see the order shift. It's not like I believe I'm baptized in water and then the Holy Spirit, you know, I'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit. No, right? Here the order has changed, right? Okay. Then we go on to the fifth instance. Okay. So we'll take some time to, uh, you know, if there are any doubts or questions, uh, we'll take some time to do that. Um, so the fifth instance is in the place called Ephesus. Now this involves Paul. Okay. So Saul became a believer. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. Ananias ministered to him. Now here we see him going to Ephesus. Um, and um, he's meeting some people here. Okay. Acts chapter 19. Okay, Acts chapter 19. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. Like important to take, make, take note, right? Finding some disciples, he said to them, see, this is the first thing. You know, it's, it seems like this is the first thing that they, you know, ever uh, in, in, the, in the conversation. Oh, hello, I'm so-and-so, I'm Paul. Who are you? Oh, my name is uh, Josephus. Okay, nice to know you. Nice to meet you. Uh, you're a follower of the Lord Jesus. Yeah, how did that happen? Oh, this is how I believe Jesus. Okay. Um, did you receive the Holy Spirit? No. Today, we'll be like, you know, why, why is this person so, you know, we, sometimes people get offended, right? Uh, and they say, you know, and they say, why should he, why should he even mention like this? It, if it happens, it happens. No, they were very intentional. Right? They said, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Very casual question. Okay. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, what kind of baptism did you have? They said, uh, well, John was baptizing, right? That kind of baptism. Verse 4, then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. So he baptizes them in water in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay. After that, we see in verse 6, and when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. What did they do? They spoke with tongues and they prophesied. So every time this, these five instances that we have seen, every time something supernatural happened, something out of the ordinary that people would not normally do happened. Right? They were filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke with tongues, and they prophesied. What is prophecy? Speaking as inspired, as led, as prompted, receiving inspiration from God and speaking it out. Right? So they received that and they prophesied. So we see, okay, it is not just gift of tongues, but it's prophecy also. In fact, because we are receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, it could be any of the gifts of the Spirit. Right? Any of the gifts of the Spirit to be manifest. So they also prophesied um, at this time. They prayed in tongues and they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. Okay. So we, 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 we learned when we put all this together, we see, okay, it doesn't mean that people have to be laid hands on. It can happen without laying on of hands. What else do we learn from these five instances? What else do we learn? We also see that it doesn't depend on the order. I need to be baptized in water and then 
it doesn't depend on that. Very clearly in you know Cornelius' house, that that happened. Okay, what else do we learn? It is for all believers, right? All believers. It's the most natural thing that was happening in the early church. Hey, these guys have become believers. Just go pray for them. Or, you know, uh, th these people have become believers. Oh, most natural thing to ask the question. No, did you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Right? We, we learned that. Right? It's the most natural. It's for all believers. It's not only for those special disciples who walked with the Lord. It's for all. All generations who would call on the Lord. Okay. Okay. We'll take a break. Um, and then once we come back, um, probably we can share some more learnings. Maybe you have some questions. We can address that also. Okay. We'll take a break and come back. Thank you.